Okay, hi there. Welcome to another in our series of short videos looking at building chains of analytical reasoning to get those top marks in your exam. So let's spend a few minutes thinking about the link between export subsidies and economic growth. And here's the question. Analyse how export subsidies may help promote economic growth. I'll give you an example of building an analytical chain of reasoning to get those marks. So an export subsidy involves government financial support to producers, some kind of financial uh, underpinning to producers, could be a farmer, for example. The subsidy often involves a guaranteed minimum payment for output, and specifically output earmarked for exporting to other countries. The subsidy might also be a payment to lower the costs of growers so that they can then reduce the prices of their exports when priced in an overseas currency. So a subsidy can make, take many different forms, but essentially it's a cost-reducing uh, government support. For example, a bit of application, the Indian government has provided extensive financial support to sugar, grain co uh, sugar cane growers and sugar producers, and also offered a very generous interest payment subsidy to rice exporters to cover the costs of uh, keeping rice in storage uh, before it's exported. Now, the main effect of a cost-reducing subsidy is to increase market supply at a micro level. I'm sure you can think of a diagram you can draw. We'll go through that in, go through that in a second. And also cause an outward shift of short-run aggregate supply, particularly if rice and sugar uh, and other industries are two key sectors in a particular economy, as they are in India. And a subsidy can also lead to increased overseas demand for and spending on exports, such as sugar and rice, which will then cause an outward shift of aggregate demand. So in both cases, increased short-run aggregate supply and uh, rising aggregate demand. Let me just change that, rising aggregate demand. Whoops, there we go. <laughs> in theory, will lead to faster economic growth, especially if a rise in exports leads to increased employment, increased incomes and increased investment. So in that sense, export subsidies can drive economic growth. The diagram, well, you could use micro or macro. You could use a shift in aggregate supply if you wanted to. I'll use a, I'll use a micro diagram. Let's say the Indian government provides a, a subsidy to sugarcane growers. That brings down their costs because the government's going to pay for some of the costs. They might subsidise, for example, fertiliser purchases and things. Uh, the price of the market goes down, and that, of course, makes it easier to export sugar, sugar cane, and processed sugar overseas. But the growers are happy because they get the, the market price plus the subsidy. They get price P3, and they're selling output Q2. So the, the, the revenue of the sugar growers after the subsidy goes up. This is what my power graph looks like at the end. I just need to turn AS at the bottom there to aggregate demand. Apologies for that little error there. This paragraph isn't perfect, of course. No paragraph ever is. But I think it does give you an idea of the depth of chain of reasoning that the examiners are really looking for in A-level. So if you can build chains of analytical reasoning, you will get higher marks in your analysis, particularly if you can use some application and some diagrams to support your answer. Uh, and just a, a, a few ideas about evaluation, because I'm a big believer that good analysis... Solid chains of reasoning helps, encourages you to produce good, uh, good evaluation. So here are three points built around that paragraph I've just written. So a general subsidy is obviously good for cost, but producers might become too dependent on export subsidies and therefore uh, not, not have as much regard for their cost efficiencies and productivity might, might slow down if you, if you have the, if you like the comfort blanket of a subsidy. And, of course, low productivity growth is a drag or a barrier to long-term growth. Good evaluation point. Uh, towards the middle there, the Indian government's provided extensive support to sugarcane growers. Fine in the short term, but if subsidies are often expensive. Millions, billions of rupees spent on subsidies. And that the state doesn't have unlimited resources. So if you spend more on subsidies, there could be an opportunity cost in the sense that state spending might be diverted away from other growth enhancing areas, such as improvements in education and healthcare and housing. 
And the third point is that there could be a knock-on effects. If your government is providing extensive subsidies to their export businesses, other nations, other countries might regard that as an unfair form of protectionism, a non-tariff barrier. And therefore, there's the threat of uh, bringing a case to the World Trade Organization or imposing some sort of retaliatory countervailing import tariffs, which could affect another industry. So the Indian government subsidizes sugar, but other countries decide to put a tariff on, I don't know, exports of gherkins or cucumbers from India. Uh, that can obviously be damaging to growth. Good analysis, everybody, helps encourage focused evaluation and evaluating the point that had been made in the preceding analysis. So there we go, another example. Hopefully this series, as we build it up, is giving you a nice way of thinking about chains of reasoning to get those absolutely top marks in your economics exams. Stay curious, stay safe, and see you sometime soon.